Welcome to this Zombicide Black Plague painting tutorial. In this video, we'll be painting the Fearsome Abomination from the Black Plague core box set, using the official War Paints Zombicide Black Plague paint set from the Army Painter, as well as sprays and other products. Here's a look at the products we used in this tutorial. First, the miniature file set, Color Primer Necrotic Flesh, the Black Plague paint set, of course, the Zombie Core paint set and the two expansion sets, Toxic Prison set and Survivor paint set. We used the three most wanted brushes and we finished off with the Aegis Suit Satin Varnish for protection. The Abomination miniature is an excellent model. However, you still need to remove the mold lines using the files from the miniature file set. There's three different files, so it's easy to find the right file for the right job. Before priming the models, it's necessary to wash the miniatures in some hot soapy water. That removes any leftovers of the release agents used in the casting process. Being a near naked crazed lunatic of a monster, with more than half of its area being skin, going for necrotic flesh color primer as our base was an easy choice. Color primer sprays are of unique quality, and they need to be used differently from other hobby sprays. Open the top and start by shaking the spray for at least one and a half minutes to really mix the pigment inside. We stock the abomination miniatures on some cardboard while spraying for maximum control and also to stop the model from falling over. Start by spraying from a close distance of no more than 20 centimeters, moving the can at all times. Turn the model around and spray from the top and the side and underneath to get the color primer all over them. Once you're done spraying, turn the can upside down and empty the nozzle until only gas comes out. That way your spray is ready to use the next time. Remove the model from the board and we're ready to paint. The beauty of the color primer is that we already base coated all the skin. Necrotic flesh color primer being the same as plague skin. So we'll start off with the torn off shirt and for that we're using brain matter beige. I'm using the Richmond brush for this work as Richmond brush is a decent sized brush that holds a lot of paint and makes you paint really fast. Next is the hood and for that we're using the new Necromancer cloak. It's a dark grey colour and again I'm using my Richmond brush. Of course the aim here is not to get any of your paint onto the skin. And then I move on to another new color, this time Elf Green. The triangular handle of the Regiment brush means I got a good grip and I'm simply working my way with the Elf Green all over the area. The next bit is the rope and for that I'm using the Insane Detail brush. I'm using the leather brown from the Black Plague paint set and that is also used for the trousers. And that time, as it's a big an area, I'm even going back to my Richmond brush. And the wooden spikes is also getting a coat of leather brown. And that leaves me just a few tiny bits at the base coat stage. The small pouch is painted wolf grey using the insane detail brush. And the small leather straps is painted zombie skin from the zombie corset, again using the insane detail brush. And that concludes the base coat stage. Well, almost. I've been a bit sloppy with my leather brown and I need to touch up my mistake. For that, I'm simply using the plague skin from the zombie black plague paint set as it's a 100% match to the color primer necrotic flesh. The next stage is the shading, and for that we're going to use the two shaders from the Black Plague paint set, starting with a plague shader on the skin. Shaders are basically ink washers designed to flow into the deepest crevices and add that extra 3D effect. Always use your Richmond brush 
when working with shaders, as it holds the correct amount of paint. And now it's just about getting paint onto the model. Try to paint on as much plate shader as you can without losing control. You don't want the plate shader to go onto the clothes and you don't want to leave any uncontrolled pools. However, you do want the shader to do its magic. Leave the plate shader to dry and then go over the rest of the model using the deep shader. Deep shader is a dark brown ink wash that is designed to go on almost all colors. Try to be extra careful when painting on the small areas like the ropes and the spikes so you don't get brown ink onto the green skin. Now it's time to highlight the model. As in all of these tutorial, we are giving the models two highlights. The first one being the same as in the base coat stage. I'm starting with the skin, and for that, I'm using the plague skin. As we said before, that's the same color as the necrotic flesh color primer spray. What you're trying to achieve here is just to leave some dark green ink wash in the very deepest recesses. You're, tr you're trying to paint plague skin on all the big surfaces, all the big areas, and leaving some green showing in between fingers, in between the muscles. As the abomination model is almost entirely skin, it's time to be extra careful at this stage. I'm using the Richmond brush. It's big enough for me to go through the model, but it also has a fine point. And then I move on to the other areas of the model, still using the same color as in the base coat stage. Elf green on the loincloth, leather brown on the trousers and the spikes, and brain matter beige on the shirt. The aim is to redefine the base color, leaving some of the deep shader showing in the deepest recesses. With that done, it's time to get out your insane detail brush and work on the second and final highlight. I'm starting with the skin tone as that's the largest area on the model. And I'm using Brain Matter Beige from the Zombie Corset. I've thinned the paint just a tiny bit for a better flow. And now it's time to be really careful. I'm working on the raised areas only, trying to follow the flow of the muscles of the abomination using sort of line movements with my brush. It's a big model with lots of skin on it. So make sure you rinse your brush now and again to make sure you got a fine point at all times. Notice how this highlight is only going on the very raised edges, still leaving some of the plague skin from our first highlight. The face is painted in the same fashion, being extra careful, as this will be the focus point of your model. Next, I move on to highlight the Necromancer cloak. I'm using the filthy suit and using only fine lines on the very edges. I want a dark gray, so I'm careful not to paint on too much of the lighter gray. For the leather brown area, I'm using a mix. Leather brown and zombie skin in about a 50-50 mix. I'm using the Insane Detail brush, both on the ropes and on the trousers, keeping the highlights fine and thin. The patch on the trousers is highlighted with a mix of wolf grey and a bit of zombie skin. And then I move on to the loincloth. On top of the elf green, I'm going for the colour Combat Fatigue from the Survivor paint set. And as always with this second and final highlight, the aim is to give a fine, thin highlight on the very raised edges, bearing in mind that when you play the game some beside, you're looking at the models from a distance of about a foot or thereabouts. And 
with all the highlighting done, it's time for the fun parts. But first, we'll finish off the base by painting it filthy suit. And then we can add blood and gore. And for that, we're using crusted saw and glistening blood. We'll start off with a darker crusted saw. Using the big regimen brush, I paint on crusted saw on the knuckles and the hands, just like in the artwork from the box game. I paint a little crusted saw part way up the arm, representing old dried up blood. Being so excited about adding the blood, I actually got ahead of myself. I'm going back and using some necromancer cloak, I stipple on some dark areas on the base to represent sort of dirt. Then I paint on some thin down crusted saw on the base, thinning the edges of each pool representing that the old dried blood has sort of seeped out into the dirt. And then back to add more blood to the model. Still using the crusted saw, as this will sort of act as my base coat for the blood areas. I'm working on the areas of the hands again, and also adding extra bits of blood all over the model. Try not to overdo it. Less is more. I finish off using the gloss glistening blood. Using the insane detail brush for more control, I paint on top of the crusted saw in certain areas. The gloss paint represents freshly spilled blood. And I also add cuts to the abomination and fine lines of blood running down the muscles. As with all of the miniatures in these tutorials, they've been painted for gaming, so they need to be protected. We are spraying them with a few thin coats of Aegis Suit Satin Varnish. A few thin coats on either side will do the job. Don't forget to turn the spray upside down as always and empty the nozzle. It took me an evening to paint the abomination from start to finish. And now it will be the centerpiece of my Zombieside games. Make sure you check out our other tutorial videos, the zombies, the necromancers, and of course, all the survivors. Enhance your gaming, play with painted miniatures. Thanks for watching.